Well, the issue over the vaccine for kids raising legal and health questions for many people. And joining us to talk about it, Dr. Abby Olalade with Sharp Reese Daily. So nice to see you once again, Dr. Abby. Uh, so we're talking emergency use authorization. Uh, now that we're familiar with that term, when do you think with this age group, what, do you, what would you expect timeline wise for full approval to happen? Well, so what we'll see is that next week the CDC will decide whether or not to adopt this recommendation, this authorization by the FDA. And we could start seeing shots in arms as, as little as a few days or even the next day after that if they do adopt that. And then they're going to continue to monitor afterward the effects in children as it gets rolled out. But we've seen that this is really good data and it's very, very encouraging. And it's good news for a lot of parents who have been waiting for this. And I do expect that they will adopt this at least in certain groups of kids potentially, or even in all children. So we'll have to wait to see what the CDC recommends. And you know, there are a lot of parents who got the vaccine for themselves, but they are hesitant for their children. What do you want to say to this group of parents? Well, what we saw from the meeting that the FDA had was that when it comes to the COVID vaccine, parents are getting a very good deal, which is a vaccine that is safe and is effective and which has really side effects that go away after a few days. And so when it, when it compares to the option that they've had up until this point, which is subjecting their kids to COVID, a virus that is so contagious when it comes to the Delta variant that getting infected for most of us or getting exposed is a matter of when and not just if. When it comes to that, up until now, they had a raw deal, which is leaving their kids at risk to COVID and the possibility of getting hospitalized, pneumonia, even myocarditis, long-term effects. And so it is good news that we have this. It will enable kids to continue to stay in school, to do things like trick or treat and really hopefully get us closer to normal again. The panel really took um, a lot of time as we expected them to do on this call uh, this week, Abby. There were even some reservations that were voiced on the part of some of the panel members. It did ultimately become a unanimous vote though to approve it for this emergency use authorization. How, what were your feelings as you were listening to some of the questions from other health experts such as yourself? Well, the first thing is that, you know, I remember from other meetings where a lot of these panel members have said that they have children and they have grandchildren as well. And the fact that they voted to authorize this, I think, means a lot and carries a lot of weight. What they saw was that even in certain cases of myocarditis, which were actually very rare in the cases of myocarditis from the vaccine, which of course is the elephant in the room for a lot of people and a lot of parents when it comes to this vaccine, the odds of getting this from COVID are far higher, exponentially higher from COVID. And when it does happen in very, very minimal, minimal cases from the vaccine, the duration of time spent in the hospital is very minimal, just a few days, even if, if they are admitted again, which is rare. But when it comes to COVID, we see this protracted course, not just with myocarditis, but also other long-term effects. We see that the multi-system inflammatory syndrome can happen even months after. So when pa patients tell me or parents tell me that, well, even if my child gets COVID, they're going to be fine anyway, that is a risk that is just not worth taking. And then when it comes to even that natural immunity, we saw some data this week that tells us that it's actually not protected in the long term. So even if they get it once, children get it once, what if they get it a second time? What happens? then. So all of this was really what they took into consideration. And this is part of why they made this decision. And the risks of COVID are far, far worse than the side effects of the vaccine that go away in a few days. It's safe. It's important to protect your children. 